protein folding is the process in which the 20 the 20 amino acids become uh uh slow blah 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 shut up poindexter you didn't think you were going to have to sit through another boring biology video did you Nah, but for real though, there's a lot of technical stuff that might get a little boring, but it'll be peppered in with some EXPLOSIONS! Protein folding is the process in which amino acids come together and bond to form large structures that perform various tasks throughout the body. But how it all works and comes together is a lot more complicated than that. Protein folding can be broken down into three, sometimes four, simple steps. This whole process determines the shape which determines the overall function of the protein. This Lego castle will serve as a demonstration of how it all works. The first step of protein folding is known as the primary structure. This simply describes the basic order of the amino acids in a chain. The chain of amino acids is held together by covalent or peptide bonds. Amino acids are molecules that contain a carboxyl group, an amino group, and a side chain, also known as the R group which signifies the type of amino acid. There are 20 known amino acids. They are asparagine, glutamine, tyrosine, serine, theronine, aspartic acid, glutamic acid, arginine, lysine, histidine, glycine, alanine, valine, leucine, isoleucine, tryptophan, proline, cysteine, methionine, and phenylalanine. These amino acids line up in the chain, which is the, just the beginning of the mayhem that is about to unfold. The second stage is secondary structure. The stage is a lot more complex as it involves the creation of a three-dimensional shape of the protein. The unique shape is formed by the hydrogen bonds between amino and carboxyl groups. The bonding leads to the inception of an alpha helix, or spiral. The shape, the shape is kept by the formation of hydrogen bonds between the backbone of amino acids. Hydrogen bonds form between an oxygen with a negative charge and a hydrogen with a positive charge. The oxygen stems from the carboxyl group of an amino acid. The hydrogen, on the other hand, is what remains from the amino group of the fourth amino acid down the chain. The alpha helix is the basic structure that forms hair, skin, and nails. The bond can also end up as a beta plated sheet or skirt. It takes place between different polypeptide chains. It's common for a single polypeptide chain to have both alpha helix and beta plated sheet regions. The third step is even more explosive. Ah! The tertiary structure is the next stage. This stage involves the shaping of the globular proteins. There are four main factors that help determine the overall shape of the structure. All of these factors are dependent upon the R group of the amino acid. Hydrogen bonds form between the R groups of certain amino acids. Ionic bonds can form between an R group that have a negative charge and an R group that has a positive charge. R groups that are nonpolar and resist water, known as hydrophobic, only associate with the interior of the globular protein. To give you an idea of just how important amino acids are in this process, we'll go back to our amino acids and their proper groupings. The polar amino acids, such as this group, are more hydrophilic and associate with side chains around the exterior of the protein. In the electrically charged group of amino acids, there are R groups that have a positive and a negative charge causing ionic bonds to form. The nonpolar group, seen here, have amino acids that are, have hy hydrophobic side chains causing them to associate in the interior of the protein. The last of the four main factors that determine protein shape are the covalent bonds that are able to be formed between two sulfur atoms in a bond known as a disulfide bond. This bond is formed after the hydrogen atoms of a cysteine amino acid break off and the two sulfur atoms covalently bond. The fourth stage, the quaternary structure, involves the combining of two previously folded protein chains. These chains combine to form a completely different protein. The proteins connect through the same interactions such as the hydrogen bonding, ionic bo bonding, disulfide bonding, and the hydrophobic interactions between the R groups as in the previous stages. This stage does not happen to every protein chain, only the ones that require a large structure. One protein that goes through this process is hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is a globular protein that assists in the clotting of the blood. Hemoglobin contains a total of four peptide chains that are held together. We hope this explosive video has furthered your knowledge in the complexity of protein folding. Until next time, we'll, we will continue building Legos and causing...
Expl... What are we doing? Oh my god, that was oh crazy! God, that was awesome! <laughs> what, they're gone! <laughs> Is that smoke coming out of there? What? <laughs>